Welcome to this mass media video on sampling techniques. To start with, let's take a look at skill one on random sampling. Now in a random sample, every unit in the population is equally likely to be selected, and each selection is independent of every other selection. And one way to do this is to assign every unit in the population a unique random number. And then we select the numbers at random, and then select the units that correspond to those numbers. Random sampling has the advantage of being completely unbiased. So let's just note that here. So it's completely unbiased. Okay, so it's completely unbiased because every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. But a disadvantage here, let's say the disadvantage of the chosen sample, might not represent the population very well because of random fluctuations. So we just note here this disadvantage that it might not represent the population. It might not represent the population. Okay, and what we can see here just on the right, this little diagram here, is just an example of random sampling where the sample is chosen completely at random. Okay, so that gives us everything we need there for skill one on random sampling. Let's take a look now at skill two, which is taking a look at systematic sampling. Now a systematic sample selects every M member of a population. So to create a systematic sample, we give every member of the population unique sequential numbers. And then we select a start number, say A, and then A plus N, then A plus 2N, etc. Okay, so we'd go A plus N, A plus 2N, and so on. Okay, and we choose N such that you get the sample size that you require. Now this method has the advantage that it does not involve random elements. So if we note that here, it does not contain, it does not involve random elements. Okay. So it does not involve random elements, so it could be performed very quickly by a machine, for example. However, it does have the disadvantage that this method could coincide with a pattern. Okay. So if we note that here, this could coincide. So this could coincide here with a pattern. And for example, this method fails if we select, or if we sample, sorry, every five items from a production line, but the machine has an error every fifth item. We either find that every item is faulty or none of the items are faulty when the real fault rate would be 20%, okay? And we can see here from this diagram on the right, just an example there of systematic sampling, where every nth member is chosen. So that gives us everything we need there for skill two on systematic sampling. Let's move on now to take a look at skill three on opportunity sampling. So opportunity, or sometimes known as convenience sampling, is a sample based on what is convenient for the sampler. For example, it could be a survey handed out to friends and family of the sampler because this is easier than contacting people they do not know. Opportunity sampling is a generally poor method of sampling, although it may be quick and easy, it is clearly biased. So it's quick and easy, if we note this here, quick and easy, however it's clearly biased and no attempt to obtain a representative sample has been made. So. It's biased. Okay. And we can see here again from this diagram on the right a brief example of opportunity sampling where this blue person is a sampler and they hand it out to, let's just say, the closest people to them. Okay. So that gives us everything we need there for skill three on opportunity sampling. Let's take a look now at skill four on stratified sampling. A stratified sample looks at a way in which the population has been divided into categories and samples accordingly. For example, to sample 15 from a population of 300 that has been split into categories of 200 and 100, we would sample 10 from the first category and 5 from the second category. Within a category, we randomly sample the population of that category. Now to calculate the size of a category in the sample, we use the following formula. 
So the size of category and sample This is equal to the size of the category in population, size of category in population. We then divide this by the size of the population. So we divide this by the size of the population. And then we times this by the total sample size. So we times this by total sample size. Okay. So that gives us everything we need there for skill four on stratified sampling. And finally, let's take a look now at skill five on quota sampling. Now in quota sampling, we sample within categories that the population has already been divided into, like in stratified sampling. However, rather than make the amount sampled from each category representative of the size of the category and the population, we set a quota for each category, then perform opportunity sampling in each category until the category's quota is met. Now, an advantage of this is that it can approximate stratified sampling when a full population list is not available. So if we just note this advantage here, is that it can approximate, approximate stratified sampling. We can approximate stratified sampling. Another advantage is that the setting of quotas can be done by any metric, meaning that categories can be weighted differently than according to their size, if, de if desired, of course. And the disadvantage here is that this choosing of quotas can easily cause a sample to be biased. So you'll note here that this can be biased. So that gives us one advantage there on quota sampling and one disadvantage. And that gives us everything we need there on skill five on quota sampling. And that concludes this mass made easy video on sampling techniques.